This video is recorded to help my students to understand how to write public static functions. A static function is a function that you can call directly uh, with a class name. So we do not need an object to invoke this static function. Actually, we can't uh, according to Java. For a static function, you must invoke with the class name dot the function name. The function we will write will be a void function that displays the menu, a function that returns the factorial of n where n is a line negative integer, a function that returns maximum value of three given integers, and a function that returns the area of a disk of given radius. So this menu will display these three functions choice. So when the user choose from this menu, the program should test uh, the corresponding function. So this pro program actually is a good example to show user how to write a program to test the functions they write. So the program structure I already gave to you. We have uh, this class called method demo. Then we declare all those functions, public static void menu, and the public static integer factorial integer n. Now, pay attention, I put a return zero here. Uh, for the compile purpose. At this point, this function we call step function, which is a function that without really any implementation, just simply return the default value of the return type. Integer's default value is zero. So return zero to ensure that this function can be compiled. Uh, same thing as here, public static integer max, you give us three integer arguments and return the maximum value among those three. Again, I just return the default zero first. So this function, if you give me a radius, I will return the area of the disk with this given radius. The return type is double. Again, I return its default value 0, 0.0. All those three fu uh, four functions are called double function, which means you just with a minimum implementation that to ensure this function can be compiled, actually this implementation uh, might not be right, Cannot uh, didn't really do anything useful, okay? Now the main function is this, you give, uh, we declare integer choice, uh, we initialize equal zero, also is for compile purpose, then I have a do while loop. As now as user's choice not equal five, why is five? Because you actually, I should say four, because I have three functions I did a test. So I have one, two, three options. So the option four is quit this uh, testing program. So this do while loop allow the user keep choose the option from the menu. Option one is the test function factorial. Option two is test function maximum. Uh, option three, test function area of disk. And option four is quit. So as now as user not choose to quit, the program will first display the menu, then ask a user to choose from the menu, and ask a user's choice, uh, based on user's choice, to call the corresponding functions to do the testing. Of course, if user choose four, then nothing happen, and the program will quit. Okay? So before we write those functions, we actually can write a main function. First, for example, here display menu. We just say menu. Call the menu function to display. Then ask a user to enter the choice from the menu. So system dot out dot print l n. Enter your choice. Maybe I do not want l n because I do not want the new line. Now then get you need to get user's choice right. So the choice equal input dot next integer. Again, in this case, what I'm going to do, I did have a scanner object input equal new scanner system dot in, okay? And of course, I did input scanner class. We already know how to do this before. This is just a review. Now, then, based on user's input, 
uh, to call the corresponding function. So I need to use a switch. Switch, user's choice. Now, if it's option one, which is case one, case one, we want to do the factorial function. So in order to do the factorial function, I will first ask a user into an uh, integer. So I declare integer, integer n. That's a system dot out dot print ln. I don't need ln. Into a nine negative integer. Nine negative integer. Now I get a user input n equal input dot next integer. Okay. Then I print out the message system dot out dot print ln the factorial of well I, I could just type n n factorial n plus n factorial equal plus I call the function called factorial n. Okay. Now you notice this function called factorial, factorial n. Then break. Now this is called k, uh, case one. Now actually, at any point, you should be able to compile this program without any uh, syntax error. Okay. So the case two. Case two, if you look at this, is the uh, return the maximum value of three given integers. So this is three given integers. Let us declare a, b, c, three given integers. That was a system dot out dot print. Uh, uh, um, we will say into three integers. So then I will say a equal input dot next integer, the first integer, b was equal input dot next integer, and c equal input dot next integer. Okay. I will do this. Then the system dot out dot print ln the maximum value of a plus comma space plus b plus comma and plus c so the maximum value a comma space b comma space and C plus is system dot out dot print ln uh, the first one I probably don't want to go to new line so delete this now I want to call the function maximum a b c now, say if we write this function called max, oh, we did not call maximum, we call the function max, so I just call max. Okay, now let's compile, oh, let's break it first. Now let's compile, okay, no syntax error, right? Now, then we do case three, case three, which is I want to <coughs> um, return the area of the disk. With a given radius, so I first double r system dot out dot print <coughs> into the radius of the disk radius. I miss a spell, not spelled radius. So then I will say r equal <coughs> input dot next double so I read the next double, then I print out message. 
system dot out dot print ln the area of the disk with radius plus r is plus now I will call the function area of disk that gave him r to this function it will calculate the area of this disk with radius r then break now you can compile oh he said that the system doesn't exist we know we have an actual m we did this m not no syntax m okay then we say case four actually we really yeah we did a case four okay case four will be quit so we'll say system dot out dot print dot n thanks for using my program goodbye you can print out any message according to your uh, application so then now what is default you can say the default is user did not choose option one two three four which means the user choose option out of the menu so you should give a hint and say wrong choice it will say wrong choice please choose from menu of course after that you will go back display the, uh, display the menu again now if user choose default that means your choice is not a four then the program will rerun this uh, roof body will display menu get a user's choice again so you are default just need a display run choice please choose from menu now you should be able to compile okay so this is a good example to show how to write a menu option for user to choose and then you keep do so if as long as user did not choose the quit option okay the default option is when the user choose make a run choice you will just print out the error message run choice please choose from menu then uh, your do while loop will go back to repeat the loop body will display menu get a user choice uh, then handle the user choice again so after we got the main function then you actually can uh, the best way is display the menu first, right? So you implement the menu function first. So system dot out dot print ln. So you will display the menu. So you have the menu choice like this. So you will system dot out dot print ln. So you will have a menu. Of course, if you want to be lazy, you can always cut, uh, do this with copy and paste. So I will say copy. So menu option one, uh, factorial. And you paste that again. Menu option two, maximum. Of three numbers, but I don't write down that much detail. I just say maximum function, then paste again. The option three is uh, area of disk. I have this again. Okay. Option four, quit. Paste again. Then option five. Oh, no, option five. Sorry, it's just quit. I don't know why suddenly my sense is smaller. 
Oh, no. My mistake. I've changed the input option to be Chinese. OK, now. Let's go. OK. Now, you should be able to compile. Actually, at this point, you can run your program. Uh, you just don't choose option 1, 2, 3. You can just choose option 4 or some other options. For example, if you wish, you can do this. We run method demo, run the main function. We say display the menu. Of course, if you choose option uh, 1, you will have a problem. Uh, your pro uh, well, you do not have a problem, but you just will not get the correct result. Because your factorial function only returns zero, your maximum function only returns zero, area of disk function only returns zero point zero. Well, you so you still can technically you still can choose option one, two, three, uh, to test if your switch statement work properly. Uh, now let us uh, test option four. Then thank you for using my program. Goodbye. Okay. Let's clear this uh, terminal window. Let us go back to here, continue to implement the factorial function. Now we know how to implement a factorial function. We need to return the factorial of n, so we have integer result equal 1, right? Then for integer i equal n, uh, i greater than 0, i minus minus. Right? So every time result multiply equal i. So when i equal n, you multiply n. When i equal n minus 1, you multiply n minus 1 to the result. Until your i equal 1, you multiply 1 to the result. Then when your i equal 0, you quit the for loop. For loop. So then you return result. Now you can always uh, implement one, then test one. For example, here I can test and run my program again. I tap this. So I choose option one. We load fact five factorial is one hundred twenty. Then say five factorial is one hundred twenty. Yes, it's good. So I choose option four. Quit. Okay. Now I clear this terminal window again. Then I come back to here uh, to write my second function. Uh, I need to say the maximum of x, y, and z. So again, I can say uh, energy result, if you wish to do so. You can say if x is greater than, uh, actually I can say energy result equal x. I assume x is the maximum first, right? Now, if I first assume x is the maximum, first number is the maximum. Okay, energy result equal x. Okay, now if uh, y is greater than x, the result. Okay, if y is greater than x, well, you can see result, no problem. x or result is the same thing here. If y is greater than result, then what happens? If y is greater than result, then we have uh, two cases. Now, if z is greater than y, okay. If so, if y greater than result, z greater than y. So that means z is the maximum. So the result equals z. Now. Else, result equal y, right? If y is greater than result, I mean y greater than x. Under the condition y greater than x, I have to compare z and y. If z also z greater than y, so the result should be z because z is the maximum. Otherwise, z less than y, x less than y, so result is y. Okay. Now. If y is not great than the result, then what I will do? I will say else if z is greater than result. Okay? If z is greater than result, then I have 
two case two. If uh, wait a moment, when this if I can reach else part, that means what? That means uh, y is not greater than the result. So y is less than x. Now if z greater than the result, then the re uh, result should be z, right? OK? Now let us double check uh, if we cover all the cases. Of course, at the end, you have to return the result. Let us check if we double uh, the we cover all the cases. So we first assume the result is x. That means we assume x is the maximum. Okay. Now, if y greater than result, that means y greater than x. Now we have two cases. Under y greater than x condition, if z greater than y, that means z is the maximum. No problem. Result is z. Else, that means z is less than or equal to y. Y also greater than x. Then the result is y. Okay. Uh, if y not greater than x, then we just check z. If z greater than x, then that means uh, z greater than x, y less than or equal to x, so z is the maximum. That's the problem. Uh, it seems like we're OK. Let's compile. No compile errors. Now let us test this function. We can test it through. We can te test the three cases A, B, uh, X, Y, Z. One of them is the maximum. So we test it three times. Okay, we tested maximum in the three integers. So I enter one, two, three. The maximum is three. Okay, so I try again. This time I enter two, one, three. Oh no. no. Well, Three is the maximum. No, that that's not okay. Uh, I I I mean it's one case, but uh, let us try again. This time, I first number is maximum. One, two, or three. One, two. The maximum is three. Okay. Now let's try second number is the maximum. Two, three, one. The maximum is three. So it seems like we test out the case. Either first number is maximum, second number is maximum, or third number is maximum. They all work okay. So we are fine. Now let's test it one more time. If I have two numbers have the same value, okay? Two, three, two. So the maximum is three. Yeah, it seems like we're okay. So let's clear this uh, terminal window and uh, let us uh, implement the last function, which is uh, area of the disk. So. This one is simple. We just return pi mass dot pi multiply r square radius multiply radius. Okay, so we can do this. Now we can test again. Test it. the best way to test it is you test if the radius is one, right? If the radius is one, the area is supposed to be three point one four one five nine two six, right? Okay, then we test again. Number three, we we'll test it. Uh, suppose your radius is two, so it's four. Two square is four. Four multiplied pi, like uh, it's about a uh, twelve point fifty six something. Okay, twelve point fifty six. Yeah. So we did it all right. Okay. If you have any questions, please give me an email. See you next time. Goodbye.